Hey, it is Danny from Conscious Calisthenics, and I'm here with my good friend Daniel Jury, which you may remember from some of my videos in the past that I've done on this channel. And yeah, back then we both used to look like soy boys, as Daniel would say. <laughs> and yeah, I'm going to do an interview with him. He was vegan for around two years and has now been eating a carnival diet for around how long? About two years now, actually. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and. We're going to talk, well, I'm going to talk to him about his whole story with veganism, how he got into veganism and like the negative effects it started to have on his health. And that's why he went in the direction of carnivore and his whole experience with the carnivore diet as well. So, yeah, thanks for joining us. Man. Yeah, no problem. So, yeah, if you could just share in as much detail as you possibly can, like what was the reason you got into veganism in the first place? Um... When I graduated high school, I found myself with a lot of time and um, I was always interested in nutrition and so I wanted to figure out, like, okay, I have all this time, can we figure out what's the healthiest diet yeah. actually? Um, so I got into, I found out about raw food, I started doing raw food, um, that didn't last very long, maybe like a week I started feeling tired. And that was like a fruitarian diet or? Mm, yeah, sort of, it was like raw fruits and vegetables and... Um, and and then after that, I I found Cowspiracy, I found Vegan Gains, and so then I was like fully vegan, you know, all the way. I went pretty much cold turkey. Um, after that, I, I remained vegan for two years after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, would you say you first got into it for health reasons, and then once you learned about the ethical side mm -hmm. of it with Cowspiracy? Absolutely, yeah. I was... I was initially interested in veganism because of health but then i started finding out like oh there's these moral arguments there's these uh, environmental arguments as well and so that just kind of solidified the whole belief system the whole worldview of veganism yeah yeah for sure and then what would you say like for the whole two years of veganism like did you get some benefits for it when did it start to go downhill and like what did your whole like sort of like you said you experienced with like raw veganism first but how did the mm. rest of your diet look on that whole two-year journey as well mm. when i initially started veganism it was quite bad i think actually my health did decline ah. for for the first two weeks maybe just like right off the bat it was it was noticeably worse like i was having diarrhea um just mostly energy it was like fatigue and like diarrhea i was noticing oh. but it was because i had no idea how to eat I didn't okay. know like how to prepare whole foods. Okay. And so I was eating stuff out of a box. You know, I was <laughs> okay. eating stuff that was in a package for every meal. You know, I'm eating granola bars. Ah, uh, okay. It just wasn't working. Yeah, so. a lot of <laughs> cereal. It just, <laughs> it just didn't work. So, and yeah, just I forgot to ask this, but um, what type of diet did you actually come from before? Did you have any experience with a healthy diet before? Did you come from a standard American diet? It wasn't super healthy no like um for example when i was um young really as far as i can remember back i had acne uh, okay. really bad acne and like um like kids would like make fun of me because in you know we're in third grade nobody has acne uh, but i had terrible acne oh, all wow. over yeah my like skin. me as well mm -hmm. yeah so i th i think that was definitely part you know due to my diet i think it was probably vegetable oils i think it was probably polyunsaturated fatty acids from vegetable oils um so you know i was eating fast food but oftentimes people told me like my friends would say like at lunch i would never eat the school lunch huh. i would my mom would always pack my lunch god bless my mom every day she packed my lunch and she i remember eating yogurt and then like a ham and cheese sandwich on on white bread and um, maybe a granola bar mm, some nuts maybe some you know just this kind of simple. chips and stuff like that or? usually not yeah. potato chips i don't remember eating a lot of that it was um i really liked yogurt growing up which is basically like ice cream if you think about it it's 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 dairy with a lot of added sugar so it's not the best but there's some some good vitamins i guess and yeah you know compared to like at school lunch they would serve like fried you know burritos and pizza and and stuff and it's absolute garbage yeah not good yeah. so yeah so then yeah like 
once you started to realize the granola bars weren't good and that how did your vegan diet then progress did you start to go what to more to more towards whole foods mm-hmm. or yeah what type of diet yeah i was i remember eating a lot of rice and beans and then i would like snack on fruits bananas blueberries strawberries um whole foods almost completely whole foods yeah um then i found dr noon amun ra and then i began fasting 23 hours a day so i was only eating once a day and that actually improved my energy improved my mood uh improved my digestion Uh, um and i think it was just due to the fact that i was sort of giving my um digestive system a break from all the vegetables all the grains all the beans all that stuff um i think i wasn't really conscious that I was having some problems with with um, my digestion because really my whole life I was constipated. Ah, yeah, okay. Up to that point, and and so I didn't know like you know I'm still I'm still having problems because I didn't have anything, I didn't have something perfect to compare it to. Yeah, you know, and um, so I started fasting and I started noticing like oh I, f- I feel quite a bit better, um, so I did that. I fasted every day for 23 hours for a long time like a year it was actually the majority of my vegan days were huh. fasting and i think it helped a lot yes yeah, so the issues that you said like it seems from what you're saying the vegan diet did help improve a lot of symptoms did it help get rid of your acne or not i think my acne did clear up um around that time yeah i think it did but we- it, i mean i stopped eating mcdonald's i stopped you know i'm there's just so many okay. there's so many things I stopped eating you know I stopped eating fried chicken I, yeah. all these things that are fried and these crazy yeah. oils I stopped so. yeah yeah so you removed as like what so many people do they get on like the vegan diet a lot of people make the same mistakes you do and then they realize they need to clean up the diet more eat more whole foods mm. And a lot of people will say like, well, the vegan diet gave me all of these benefits, but normally they're removing so much of the other crap, the white sugar, the processed right. foods, like the white flowers, like a lot of this crap. So right. you would say for you, a lot of the benefits you got, would you say it was, would you attribute a lot of it to removing a lot of the crap you were eating? It was all, it was all due to elimination rather than addition. The, <laughs> the, 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 the fruits and vegetables, adding those in did did nothing for me. It was it was completely any benefit I got was from eliminating, you know, all the garbage from my diet. Yeah, and this seems to be a reoccurring theme for a lot of people. And like you said, you got the veganism, but you were still experiencing some digestive issues. Your energy mm-hmm. levels weren't so good, mm-hmm. and then you did the one meal a day, which then allowed you to start resolving a lot of those issues. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it was like helping with it, but it was showing that I guess the vegan diet wasn't necessarily giving you everything that you needed right. to function as optimally as possible feel as good as possible exactly yep and and so and then eventually i even ran into a wall with the fasting and the whole food vegan diet and and that was um about the time that i met you was was when that was happening so like we would fast and danny was doing the same thing like we were both vegan and we were fasting all day but what would happen is like we fast all day and then we sit down to eat and basically, we couldn't satiate ourselves, and so we'd eat these huge, stupid piles of food, and and we would both be so full, yeah, but not satiated, yeah. still hungry, but very full, and it's yeah. quite a terrible feeling. Yeah, for sure. And from what you're saying, it's like for me and my experience as well, uh, is that yeah, the fasting helped me a lot, mm-hmm. like massively, like mm-hmm. so many ups and downs, having my blood sugar levels on mm-hmm. a vegan diet and energy levels over the show, I found that it helped me so much mm-hmm. and it benefited me so long, but then inevitably, like you, it seemed to tail off and it was mm-hmm. just like, did you feel that the reason why you started just eating so much food like me is because not necessarily because you were fasting for long periods of time, not eating mm-hmm. loads of food throughout the day, not getting sufficient calories, so to speak, but it was just like the food wasn't necessarily giving you what you needed. So you found you could overeat and just go crazy with it or? Absolutely. I think it, it was both protein, a lack of protein, and a lack of vitamins, mainly the fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, probably K2. It's, yeah. It just was a lack of, of so- nutrition. And, and we would eat these huge meals and then it's your body's still like, Okay, but where you know where's the steak? Basically? Yeah, and then we go never... to we go to a next restaurant and mm. another one, and then go eat cakes here and do this. And Crazy, it's just like 
Yeah, and it, it seemed like you did try for periods of time just eating like pretty much exclusively whole foods, but it just mm. wasn't giving you what you needed. Exactly. And and we were, I mean, I remember we would eat like a big plate of rice. We'd have fruits. We'd have beans. We'd have vegetables. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, we like, were covering all the bases. Yeah, yeah and I, I do remember being that round Daniel. Most of the time, the majority of food he was eating was whole foods, like the foods mm-hmm. that he was eat that he's just mentioned. So it's like, for me personally, when I was around Daniel, it seemed that the way he was eating, the way I was eating, was like really, really good. But I remember with you, this is a really good thing to remember. Daniel would always have such a big bloated belly, not mm-hmm. after eating, of course he did after eating, but even like the next day, mm-hmm. he'd have such a descended belly, mm-hmm. like this was something you had like such a common issue with, I mean your yeah. digestion was never on point. Yeah, and it was like, it was embarrassing too to walk around like with this big belly, it's, it, um, it's like I look fat, but actually I wasn't fat, I had a six pack, but my stomach was just distended, and I think it was... I don't know if it was fermentation, possibly fermentation in my gut. It just was, there was so much stuff in my intestines just all the time, just sitting in there. And and so, you know, I would eat this meal and then it's like, I wake up and I'm like, oh my gosh, um, I feel like a big balloon. And so I would have to fast all day to get rid of it. And then by the time, you know, end of the day, oh, I feel good again. My stomach's flat. I feel like good energy, but I'm starting to get hungry. Yeah. And so then I would eat this huge meal and then it, it was just this cycle Perpetual over and cycle. over and over. Yeah. So yeah, alongside like the one meal a day, which did help give you improvements initially, did you find that you tried to do so many different things like myself and many other people to try and make the vegan diet work? Yeah, so after I after the whole food vegan thing wasn't working for me, I thought, okay, we'll, we'll do this fruitarian thing. Um, so I started getting into fruitarianism and that went pretty bad. I, I ended up losing a lot of weight. I lost a lot of weight. Probably, I probably went from one fifty to around one twenty. Wow! Pounds. Wow! I can't, I don't know the yeah, kilogram, yeah. but you guys can type it in yeah. really quick. Um, so yeah, I lost quite a bit of weight, and like I think my mental health also kind of went out the window. Like I remember specifically one time I was. I had maybe only eaten grapes for a few days. I was doing like a grape fast. And I remember my mom looking at me and she's like, Daniel, you're crazy. Like, <laughs> I think you have something seriously yeah, wrong yeah, with yeah. you. She, she said like, just my eyes, this looked like, like a killer's eyes or something. Like I just was out of my mind. And I definitely didn't feel super in touch with the, the world at that point. It was yeah. kind of kind of a floaty kind of uh, feeling all the time. So that just, that proved itself not to be sustainable <laughs> long term. You know, it just didn't work. Um, oh, and also, I, I with that, I ran into like really bad sugar cravings. Oh, wow. Really bad, like um, just to the point where it was like a, a possession. Like I had to have sugar. If I saw, if, and it wasn't only fruits, like it started to become this craving for donuts. Oh, wow. Craving for bread, craving for any sort of like carbohydrate dense food, wow. energy dense food. I would just would like, wow, like I got to have it. And so that ended up really bad. I ended up um, eating a lot of stupid pastries and cakes and stuff. And it was, I think it was candida. I think my gut was so mm, used to eating sugar, then, then the bacteria just uh, festered. It just, it just overpopulated with that kind yeah. of bacteria. And so... My brain was just hyper focused on sugar. Yeah, so did you find that, uh, at least from what, yeah, I'll just see if this is what you're experiencing, it seems you was, that did it start to really make you have an unhealthy relationship with food? Mm. Did you find? Absolutely, yeah. Probably, probably rock bottom was around this time when I was, I was into fruitarianism and then I started eating just like, junk just sugary junk i was really rock bottom it was like i would i would binge on all this ice cream and and sugary crazy stuff and then um you know i'd sleep and then wake up and just feel terrible the whole rest of the day it just feels so bad and like isolate myself because i I was anxious i didn't want to talk to anybody and and just sit in my room and then like I would only go outside at night and then I would do the same thing again. I would just go out and I'd be craving sugar. As soon as I got hungry again, it was just my brain was just like sugar, sugar, sugar. So I'd go eat like a whole load of durian or some fruit and then I'd go on to donuts and then I'd go on to 
Seven Eleven pastries and then oh it, man, it sounds very similar to me. It's a very similar thing that I did, and I can relate to that for mm-hmm. sure because it just it seems that the body's just not getting what it needs, so it yeah. just gets out of control. It seems yeah. like it's a very similar thing for you. And then I had the you know at the end of the night, I had that walk of shame back to my room. I had this big <laughs> stomach full of crap, and I'm like, oh what you know, I, yeah. I did it again. Why did I do it again? Yeah. But eventually, I came around and I thought. Okay, well, well, actually, I took I took one more step. I did one more crazy thing, and I thought, okay, this is not working. Animal foods are bad for you. Eating whatever I want's not working. So I thought, okay, we're just not supposed to eat. So then I got into the breatharian thing, and uh-huh. I just started starving myself. And of course, that only lasted so long. Yeah, you know, so it started like forming like I guess like what someone called orthorexia. It just becomes mm-hmm. like a very unhealthy relationship with food, and yeah. it. It, and I had a similar experience. I start thinking, I'm reacting to all these foods. I'm not feeling good from it. What am I meant to do? Just not eat? Right. Is that like, That's the it gets to a point you where to... you're suffering so much and it mm-hmm. sounds like you were. And yeah, it's just absolutely crazy seeing it with so many people. And apart from the negative effects you've mentioned so far, what other negative effects would you say that you experienced? One, I'd say, is with your physique and how it changed. Mm-hmm. It was like a huge thing. Yeah, I think the, the physique change is probably mostly hormonal. Probably hormonal. And... My whole, uh, myself, I, I just was more effeminate. Ah. I was I was more uh, feminine and soy kinda, boy. Yeah, I was <laughs> soy boy. So it's like to the T. I, did, I didn't have, uh, and you know, growing up, like I lifted weights when I was 15, you know, until I was really until I was vegan. And I played football. I, I played baseball. You know, I... I I love to run. I love to do all this stuff. And um, after I became vegan, I just became more interested in like um, not that kind of stuff, yeah. you know. Um, yes, yeah, so it had like the feminizing effects on you. It didn't give you like that masculine like, uh, yeah. type of thing. And and I will put some images here of Daniel before and after. And before compared to now, like you can see his physique, he just looked way thinner and it looked like he's quite malnourished mm-hmm. at the time compared to now which is like massive difference mm, yeah. like for me personally for daniel saying about the feminizing thing i hadn't seen daniel for quite a while after he'd been on the carnivore diet and now with me after not seeing him for quite a while which i just started meeting up with him recently is where i am you look more like a man you have yeah. like this man quality to you you don't look like a boy anymore yeah. whatsoever like yeah and i've i've feel it like it's something I, I feel inside too it's I just feel more at peace before I was just constantly like anxious and like yeah just you know I want to yeah, I want to go play and like dance around it's, it's like nah man just you know relax and yeah, I feel more grounded now for sure so yeah I think that's a hormonal thing I think it's probably oh, yeah cholesterol you know because cholesterol is like a precursor for a lot of the sexual hormones so yeah I think that definitely had something to do with it. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably why my physique. Otherwise, um, mm, other other changes. That's probably the biggest one. That's probably the most the most important one. Yeah, for sure. And it's like just me being around Daniel after not seeing him for quite a while. is just such a different person inside and out. Mm. He can tell you about things that's resolved and issues he had going on, but it's just like, he seems like a new person to me. He seems more alive, more mm-hmm. vibrant, just like more switched on, more alert, more there, mm-hmm. like more and, grounded. Like and you too. I, like we saw each other for the first time. It had been like almost two years and we both were vegan last time we saw each other. And then we both st- switched like a mostly animal based nutrition diet. And, and so we both saw each other yeah. and, we, and I was like, dude, Danny, like, yeah. your head looks different. Like your shoulders, you got, I can just tell you had more testosterone yeah. and, and just like the way he, you know, engaged in a conversation, he was more calm. He, he was less, um, less yeah. effeminate. It's, yeah. 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 I mean, you have noticed that this is something that is with Daniel, that it seems like his jaw has got wider. It could be mm-hmm. due to him not chewing on soft, mushy food anymore. He's chewing mm-hmm. on steaks and right. other stuff that I, works the jaw more. I think that, but it's also, if you look into Weston A. Price, the nutritional yes. and physical de- degeneration, he found that uh, people that ate uh, more animal-based nutrition, their schools developed differently, and especially for children that, that had correct nutrients when they're growing. They, they they grow wider faces. Yeah, they yeah. have bigger jaws compared to kids that don't have so much nutrition available. They have a more narrow face. So yeah, it could be it's significant. Well. If you haven't seen that 
what Daniel was talking about. I'll put a link down below for that. So what was the fi- what broke the horse's back? Mm. Like what the final made strike. you like switch and like yeah, and, and why did you choose car- carnivore as well? That mm. we could talk about. Well, I I, I was aware of Svetia on YouTube and, yeah. and so are you we, and we both thought it was kind of crazy right? yeah eating meat at vegan yeah. events and stuff yeah, and so meat. and so I thought mm, well I've hit like rock bottom and I you know food wasn't working for me so, so I thought the foods that I thought were, were supposed to work didn't work and then so I thought okay I'm just not going to eat and that didn't work so I thought all I have left to do is, is try meat that's yeah. all I have left to do and so I remember this night. I remember this night very vividly. I went to, I went to the shopping mall, and downstairs of the shopping mall, there's a grocery, and they have a butchery. Uh-huh. And I got a ribeye. I think it was a ribeye steak. And I, I just got this little steak. It was probably 200 grams. And I didn't even cook it. I didn't have a way to cook it. And so I thought, okay, I'll just go full sweaty. I'll just eat the steak raw. And so I took it back upstairs, and I went onto the road, and I sat down. And I, I looked at the steak and I thought, okay, I'm just going to eat it, I guess. And I just took a big bite out of it. And it was like the moment it hit my lips, it was like, oh, like that's what I needed the whole Instant time. Instant relaxation. Instant, yeah. It wasn't like, okay, I ate it. And then like 30 minutes later, I'm like, dang, I feel pretty good. It was like, as soon as the taste hit my tongue, my brain goes, yes, exactly. That's That's exactly what you needed. Wow. So... Yeah, and, and, and I remember after that, too, I um, I was walking around the mall. I started noticing girls. So I started thinking, like, wow, look at all these girls. Because that's important to mention, which Daniel hasn't talked about. He got on NoFap, which I'm still pro NoFap. But, yeah, how did it affect your sex drive, actually, with the vegan diet? And then you can explain further about what you're about to go into. On a vegan diet, I didn't have sex drive. It was <laughs> it was non-existent. It, I was doing no fat, but it was like not like I was, you know, practicing any major self-discipline or anything. Like it just wasn't there. The desire to, you know, talk to girls, my libido just was zero. Yeah, it just wasn't even there. And then as soon as I ate a steak, it came back. I'm looking around like. Dang, look at these girls. So you went from like a celibate monk to like a young person. <laughs> in like, like one minute. Yeah. Yeah. And I, th- I wow. thought like, have, they, have these girls been here the whole time? Like, what, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, so it's quite, cr- it's quite crazy. So after that, I, I pretty much gave in and, and let go of the vegan idea. And um, I just started eating. I remember I got raw milk. I was eating a lot of beef. Um, because at this point I was pretty much aware of the carnivore diet. It was, yeah. it was just starting to get popular. Like, um, oh yeah, it was just around that time. It was just starting to pick up and I was aware, like I, I'm tapped into YouTube and Instagram and stuff. So I was aware of it, but I, before I thought they were all kind of crazy. And then after that experience, I was like, okay, I think there's something to this. So I started thinking about things a lot differently as far as killing animals and, and eating them and what that means and, and um, the necessity of that uh, for us to thrive as humans, you know. Um, yeah, so you'd obviously heard about the carnivore diet before, thought it was a bit crazy, but then you actually listened to your own experience right. because so many vegans out there say animal foods are bad and they're not thriving so well, but they've never tried animal foods, like a carnival-based diet of that, or they have a crap they used to eat with all the meat. Right, that's the thing, they, they never isolate animal foods. Like a lot of vegans, like even if they do try to to incorporate some animal foods, like they'll eat like a salmon steak, but they also load it up with like a ton of veggies. Yeah. Maybe that's not gonna digest so well. Yeah. You know, maybe just try only the salmon. Yeah, for with, sure. With some egg, you know, or only try just some eggs, or try just only a steak don't also eat <laughs> potato wedges and you know a, a big bowl of fruit with yeah, it. So yeah, maybe yeah that's not the best yeah, idea the other crap so for you you stuck to raw carnivore from the start because you mm. didn't have any methods to cook at home because if you don't know in thailand you don't normally get ovens and cookers and mm-hmm. whatnot in in your place yeah i i i didn't have any way to cook and it sort of made sense to me also like i, I still had some dogma in my brain like I thought, I remember thinking, it's like, obviously what most people are doing is not working. I was, yeah. I was aware of that. And, and most people, they cook meat. 
And so I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe there is something to this whole Ajanis Vonder planets, Svetia. Maybe they're right about this thing. And maybe just eating raw meat is what we're supposed to do. I mean, it kind of makes sense. You kill an animal and you just eat it. So I thought, okay, I'll try it. And it didn't, you know, I, I tried it already. It didn't kill me. So <laughs> I didn't feel terrible. I felt good. So yeah. I thought, we'll just keep going, you know. Yeah, it's like proof in the pudding from your own experience. Right. So I think I was raw, like exclusively raw. Like I was eating raw chicken, raw pork, raw beef, raw milk. Um, Pig's blood. Because I saw you. Mm -hmm. this, yeah, this is something to, to mention, I think, like. I didn't know Daniel had gone raw carnival, and then once we met up at the waterfall, and he's there eating raw beef mints and drinking pig's blood. <laughs> but for me, I don't care what anyone does, as long as it's not harming me or my loved ones. Mm. I didn't judge him, I didn't criticise him, yeah. it just intrigued me, and I knew that a lot of people got benefits from a carnival diet, so mm -hmm. like, as long as it's working for him, which I saw it was. That's right, yeah. I kind of forgot we saw each other again in Chiang Mai shortly after I started eating raw meat and stuff, yeah. But I like just started, so you couldn't really see no how much you know I had changed or how different I felt. But yeah, so I was like, I was drinking blood. I was, I was just trying to get my hand on any possible animal food I could eat. And there in Thailand, it's it's very easy to find blood because they make like a blood yeah. soup. They they put blood in this um, meat salad they call lab, and so there's there's blood everywhere. So I thought, well, maybe I'll try this. You know. Why not? And I did. I did notice um, quite a feeling of virility after I drank blood. Like, feel very strong, but sort of lucid and um, drunk. It kind of had like a drunkening effect to it, which I'm. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't drink blood anymore, but I think probably nutritionally, it's it's quite a good food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it sounded like you, your body, like you tried the raw stuff and it needed as much nutrition that you've been mm -hmm. lacking for so long. Yeah. And then, yeah. So your lowest weight, you was around 120 pounds. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. What, <laughs> what other, yeah. What were the changes you noticed for your physique? Like how much did you end up gaining? And like, yeah. So I basically exploded after I started, really it was the raw milk. Um, so I started eating meat and drinking milk, and I started feeling like I want to train again, like going back to lifting weights uh, like I did when I was 15, 16, 17, when I was younger. And I got quite strong at a young age. Like by the time I was 18, I had some pretty solid lifts, and I was pretty strong. But then my whole vegan journey, it basically all went away. Yeah, it, I lost basically all of my strength. And so I went back to the gym I started because I felt like I wanted to. It wasn't like I, like I wanted to build muscle. or you like didn't it was like. You didn't have to push yourself. Exactly. It was just like, okay, like, you know, I want to go lift stuff. Like, uh, I feel I feel powerful. I feel like I want to go exercise. So I did. And so started squatting, started benching, started doing a lot of deadlifts and pull-ups and rows. And, and I just started getting strong really fast. Because, you know, if you already have strength and then you lose the strength, it's much easier oh, yeah. to get back. And so it just started packing on, packing on. And... Excuse me. And yeah, I actually do remember at another point because <clears throat> we did a training session with Vegetable Police mm -hmm. before, and I hadn't seen you for ages. You've been doing the Royal Carnival, mm -hmm. and you just he just bulked up like crazy, yeah. like he just absolutely ballooned. Yeah. He didn't have fat, or he did have like more fat than he had bit. before, but you looked healthy. It looked yeah. like it was what your body exactly needed. Yeah, I put on I. I I think I weighed 125 pounds about when I started. And then within about five months, I ended up weighing 165. So I put on 40 pounds in five months. Pretty yeah. insane. Yeah, because you were going absolutely crazy with the milk, weren't you? Yeah. So in, in one day, I would drink at least five liters of milk. Yeah. At least, sometimes six. So that, and then not only that, I was drinking five liters of milk, but I would also eat some beef. Maybe I would have five eggs. Maybe I would also drink honey, um, eat pork, you know, chicken. I was chicken liver. I was just packing in as much as I could possibly. I wasn't drinking any water. I was only drinking yeah. milk. So yeah. the calories are just coming in. And then I was going to the gym and I was pumping the weights and put on 40 pounds in five months. Yeah, <laughs> in the rebuilding phase, like literally yeah. regeneration phase. Yep, yep. Yeah, and it's just like, so yeah, it just sounds like it was just like upwards, upwards, upwards. Mm -hmm. It just kept getting better and better and better for you. And what other changes would you say that you notice? How was your digestion, the elimination? 
that's a, that's the main thing. That's that's really what kept me um, kept me doing that because this constipation that I had my whole life just went away. I'm like had no constipation, which is amazing when you spend you know 20 years of your life constipated oh, wow. and then suddenly you're not constipated. It's like wow, this is nice. Everything just feels like oh, it's so it, free. Yeah, and my stomach just feels flat and like. Can you wow. actually show him your stomach and see what it looks like now? Yeah. So you can see he's pretty flat, but before he used to be like like belly out Distended like this. all the time. Yeah. Like this like and, nah, it's just okay. It's just flat. It's normal. Yes, yeah, so it looks like you're not full of loads of fiber and plant foods that are not really right. moving anywhere and causing you issues. Right. Exactly. So yeah. So I just I just felt better all around. I just felt calmer and and um, then I so so I started. I was lifting weights and then I started wanting to do Muay Thai. I'm in Thailand. I'm that. You know, th and this just goes to show how different I felt. I went from like complete fairy fruit boy, like traveling around Thailand, like totally lost, to like oh, I want to try, I want to get in a ring and fight somebody. You know? Yeah, it's my my whole mindset. This Testosterone. Is, yeah, so I started training Muay Thai, um, and the carnivore diet held held up really well because I. I excelled in Muay Thai very rapidly in, in one year. Wow. Like, um, uh, I, I went from, in one year, in about one year, I went from a complete beginner to martial arts to uh, fighting on national television in Thailand. And <laughs> I, I attribute that mostly to my diet because I'm, I was able to train hard every single day, day in, day it's out. Sustainable. Yeah. You know, I had low inflammation. Um, I was getting good sleep. You know, I was getting a ton of protein, getting good energy. You know, my metabolism was very healthy. I was able to train hard, and that's why I think I excelled at the yeah. rate that I did. Yeah. I like on the vegan diet where it wasn't really giving you everything oh. you needed to sustain it. It's, it's like, no way. There's no way I could have done that on a vegan diet. There's just no... Yeah. It just wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And would you say you got any other benefits apart from those? Did you notice any difference with your hair, your skin, like anything else cognitive-wise, like mood-wise? Mm. Did you find that you ever became just like more at peace with yourself? I noticed that a lot. I felt just calmer in my everyday life, a nicer yeah. person to be around. Like Yeah, definitely calmer. Definitely calmer for sure. Um, as far as hair, I I can't really tell because when I was vegan, I had oh, yeah. dreadlocks, and so my hair was just a ratty mess anyway. Yeah. So I ended up shaving all that off after I started eating meat, which again just shows like my my mind changed. It was like a total like I like woke up. I'm like wow, you know everything is <laughs> everything just feels different now. You know, I shave my head, I start doing martial arts, and um, yes, yeah, so it just sounds like as a whole, it just gave you back your life fully so you yeah. experience life experience life to the fullest that's true and just be the most healthy optimal version of yourself because it sounds like it did just put all your hormones in check and just made you more of like a, what a man is meant to be unlike mm. we have so many feminized men whether they're on a vegan diet or many other diets that are feminizing so it just yeah it just the whole world now it's really there's a quite a pandemic going on now with feminized men and it's it's really a problem i think um growing up a lot of young men, we don't have strong um, moral figures of men to look up yeah, to. Idolize and yeah. yeah, that can help us along. Really and we live in quite a feminized, oh. effeminate culture now. And, <laughs> and um, so it's quite, it's quite a problem. And I think the vegan diet is definitely ties into this. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. At least from what I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. So, yeah, you was on Raw Carnival, but then your diet has changed over a t period of time. Yeah. Are you still consuming loads of honey, loads of milk? Like, yeah, and the whole switch around with your diet. Because it's progressively changed over time, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, so for a long time, I was like, actually, most, most of my calories came from milk for a long time. And then, um, and then I was also completely raw. Um, but then I started experimenting with cooked meat and I noticed that really I felt no different eating cooked meat and the cooked meat was like really delicious. So I thought, <laughs> well, heck, you know, I'm just going to eat cooked meat. Um, I still, I still do eat raw meat like today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually today, all I've had is raw beef, just raw minced beef. Um, but I have no objection against eating cooked meat at all. I think, um, if anything, there, there could be some compounds that are created when you cook meat that could be actually beneficial. Yeah, you said like polyphenols. Yeah, yeah. Po 
polyphenols. Polyphenols. Yeah. There's there's um there's things in charred meat that that have end up having an antioxidant effect occur in your body when you when consumed. Yeah. So unlike a lot of people think it causes a carcinogenic effect, yeah. which is a lot of misinformation. Right. And I think there's just a reason, you know, you smell a steak on the grill, it's like <sighs> oh what is that? You know, it's, it's so appealing. Mm-hmm. It's it's um definitely attractive to the senses. So I think there's a reason for that. I think probably probably it's okay it's okay to eat raw meat for sure like and i was healthy doing it for a long time but also i think cooked meat is is good yes yeah, so you felt good from both of them which mm-hmm. is really good and it, it's good that you didn't become dogmatic because i know a lot of people yeah. that get into raw carnivore can become dogmatic yeah. and like really do what like fruitarians do and say like the cooked meat is bad just like mm-hmm. fruitarians right. say cooked food is bad and right so forth so yeah i started eating cooked meat and then i also almost completely dropped milk out of my diet um, really the reason for that is not because it was um, not serving me as a food it was a great food it's for me I love it because it's easy to get calories in you just oh. slam it down it, two it's delicious and three it's delicious <laughs> <laughs> that's why I love raw milk but um, I stopped because uh, in Muay Thai it's it's quite beneficial to be lean because uh-huh. you're just lighter and um, you can have more muscle mass for your weight if you're leaner so you can be you know if if you have lower body fat and then more muscle you're going to be stronger than your yeah. opponent if your opponent's fatter than you then it's like your fat doesn't really serve you yeah. very well in a fight because it's not strength it's not muscle so i wanted to lean out and so i thought well probably if i stop drinking milk and just replace the milk with meat i'll probably lean out a lot and and that's what happens so. oh yeah for sure because when i saw daniel and he was bulking from that point when he bulked until now i hadn't seen him in between so i'd seen him when he was bulked and now when he's like more ripped to lower body fat percentage mm-hmm. in it yeah you look like you have more of a muay thai yeah. type of physique that's ideal to be the best fighter that you possibly can yeah yeah, yeah. so i i still absolutely recommend milk as a as a food for almost anybody it's it's not ideal if you want to lose fat it's really not <laughs> ideal but um if especially for people that are malnourished like Raw milk is maybe the perfect food. Yeah, and you don't really consume raw honey now. We offered him some today, so he had mm-hmm. some for sure. But you, at one point, you was having a lot of raw honey, wasn't a lot. you? But not now. Yeah, a lot. And it's it's a similar it's a similar reason why I just wanted to kind of lean out. And then also I wanted to experiment with zero carb um, because throughout my whole carnivore journey, uh, at that point when I decided to cut out the honey, it was all carbohydrate like pretty high carbohydrate because i was either having a lot of milk or i was having a lot of honey when i dropped the milk out i I started drinking honey um ah and you're drinking a lot of honey i drink a lot of honey yeah i I was telling danny that i would buy these 750 milliliter bottles of honey and oftentimes it would take me about three days and sometimes only two days to drink the whole thing (laughs) 750 milliliters which i think i think 750 milliliters of honey is is really only around 4,000 or 5,000 calories. Yeah. So it's really not that much yeah, calorically, yeah, yeah. but... Your but, body needed it. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, the thing was, at that time, I, I was training, and, and, and oftentimes, most of the time, I was training for a fight, and so I was training really hard. It's like you would wake up, and I would go run 5 or 10K, and then I'd hit the bag after that oh, and wow. do push-ups and sit-ups. Oh, and, wow. and, then I'd, and then I'd go home and rest for a while you know, eat, and then I go back and train basically the same thing with even yeah. more training, actually, in the evening. So, like, training hard. Yes, yeah, so your like, calorie oh. expenditure was very high, so you yeah. needed it. Yeah, so I, w- I would literally just, like, wake up in the morning before my run, and I would just, like, gulp, 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 just drink <laughs> honey. So, yeah. Um, but now, for a while, the majority of the time, you've been doing zero carb. How long mm-hmm. have you been doing that for? And have you noticed any differences? Would you say one's better than the other or not? I think that when I'm not consuming honey, when I'm not consuming sugar or carbohydrates, my mood is more stable. Huh. I think my mood is more stable. I think if I'm consuming carbohydrates, sometimes I can get a little bit irritable, a little bit irritable, um, or just tired, maybe not even irritable, just sometimes I just get kind of tired. Um, so it's a lot more like stable on zero carbs. A carnival, lot more stable, yeah. And then, But as far as my... Um, athletic performance I can't really say for sure that it's yeah. better I, I know for a fact right now I'm I'm in better shape than I've ever been before and I'm zero carb yeah 
So <laughs> I, but that's I don't know. I just I've just been training, and so it just kind of builds up. You just get stronger and stronger. But um, I don't know. I have to experiment more. But I th I think if anything, I actually perform better zero carb than I do with carbohydrates. But I can't say. For yeah, sure. but some people seem to. Some people don't. But yeah, yeah. You, you seem to. You, on raw carnivore, you felt good. Cooked carnivore, and then a combination of mm -hmm. things, you seem to function on anything. Whether it's mm -hmm. like, it, as long as it's like a carnivore type of food. Yeah. And did you ever try experiencing going back to any vegetables or any plant foods? Yes. What was your experience with that? Yes. Um. So what's the difference? High flying at this point. It's like yeah, yeah. it's basically any time I eat a high fiber vegetable food, it's like I. It doesn't kill me, but I just feel it. Yeah. I, th I feel it. Whereas normally it's like I eat and then I kind of forget about it. And I just have energy and it's cool and I can do whatever I want. And But if I eat fruits or I eat vegetables and then, you know, a few hours later I go for a run, I might get a cramp. Ah, uh, okay. I might, I just, I, I can, I might be able to feel it just in my gut. It doesn't it's, feel right. Yeah, it's, it's like I used to have this big gut and all the time it's like I could, my guts just felt full. And it's that same huh. feeling. I just feel like something in there. Yeah. And while it's not like drastic, you know, I'm not having like really bad, you know, reactions like I'm breaking out or, or something like that or getting like drastically depressed. It's just like I don't, um, I don't crave fruits and vegetables yeah. and then if I do eat them like socially or something, um, I just don't feel as good. Yeah, because Daniel's an uh, orthodox Christian, and you said at a certain point you have, is it Lent, where they do like vegan yes. for a while, and you had a really bad experience with trying yeah. to do that. Yeah, so during Great Lent, you're, you're vegan, basically. You're vegan, but also include shellfish. This is in the orthodox Christian church. So during Great Lent, it's 40 days, and so you're supposed to go vegan, basically, for 40 days. And so... You've been carnival for a while. <laughs> yeah, and so I thought, well, so I can basically eat everything that I don't usually eat. <laughs> so I thought, okay, well, I'll try it. I'll try it. And so uh, I lasted about, well, I, I lasted one week. And, and this was under the guidance of my priest. You know, I was telling him what was happening. But basically the first two days I tried to just go strict vegan. Um, so I was eating rice and vegetables, uh, fruits, uh, low sugar fruits like tomatoes, um, it's very clean vegan whole foods. Yeah, just all all whole foods. Yeah, and the the what ended up happening was after my first meal of rice and vegetables and beans, I got um, what do you call acid reflux. Oh wow! Got really bad acid reflux, um, and like a big fatigue set in, and then like an hour after I had the meal, I got um, insatiable hunger. I just got this extreme wow. not insatiable extreme hunger. I got really hungry again. I thought, crap, okay, was, well, now what do I eat? And so I started eating fruit, <laughs> ate all this fruit. I, I went and bought a bunch of fruit. I ate all this fruit, and then I'm like still like, oh, no, like I'm still hungry. Like, what do I do? And so, um, you know, I just tried to calm down, but it ended up being really hard. Like I was quite anxious, yeah. I felt quite anxious and just like out of control, I'm just feeling like I'm out of control. Um, so that only lasted like two days, and then um, – I finished the rest of the week off only eating shellfish because that was technically <laughs> part of the Flint fast. So I was like only eating shrimp, squid, and oysters yeah. for a whole week. Yeah. So. yeah, so you got yourself to a point where you're thriving again and then you tried eating whole foods and you didn't go through the whole mistakes you did when you first went vegan with all the processed junk food and so yeah. forth. It didn't work. And I, I would also like to add that um, during that first two days, I did I did two days where I was strictly vegan and then... The third day I was trying to do like, uh, maybe the third and the fourth day, I was trying to do shellfish and vegan food. Within those first four days, I put on eight pounds. So that's like three kilos. <laughs> and that wasn't muscle. <laughs> no, it was, it was not muscle because I wasn't training either. I quit training for this fast. And so I put on eight pounds wow. in, in four days. And then um, I, lo I ended up losing the rest of it all on the, in the next three days. I lost I lost eight pounds in three days because I was only eating shellfish and I was fasting a lot during the day too. Like usually I would eat like just one big meal of shellfish at night. So yeah, for sure. And yeah, so you've had a few switches, like I said, with the carnivore diet. And 
at first, you, I think if I remember correctly, you were saying to me recently, you were eating more fat, but then you found over a period of time that's changed with like your protein and fat intake mm-hmm. has had to change for satiation. Yeah. Um, I find that fat doesn't really satiate me. And actually, um, when I was, try- I was trying to do higher fat um, and zero carb, I... This is when I started doing zero carb, right? So, I, so then I upped the fat, thinking that I needed more energy. And that's what people say time and time again on the carnivore diet. If you're not feeling suited, it's not working, you need more fat. Yeah, and so, and so that I tried that. But what ended up happening is I ended up getting this insatiable hunger. And then also I was getting fat. I started putting fat on. Oh, wow. And so I thought, hmm. And then also I was, get, I was breaking out. But I think this is because the fat that I was eating was uh, grain-fed uh, fat. Okay. Um, so that also could have been a factor. Maybe if I would do a higher fat diet with, with grass fed yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, fat, it, it might be better. But um, yeah, it was I, the high fat thing wasn't working for me. And so I, then I switched into more of a high protein thing um, with low or moderate fat and no carbs. And then I, I felt great. Like my energy was really good. Um, my satiation was really good. So. Yeah, you got on point. So if you say like what your diet looks like now, I think it's like you eat mostly beef now. Is that right? Mostly beef. Yeah. Yep. Mostly beef. Yeah. I I um at the moment where I'm at, I can get my hands on some really good ninety ten grass fed um, beef mints. Yeah. And so I just basically I'll fry that up, or I'll just eat it raw sometimes. I'll just or I'll fry it up um, with butter and put salt on it and. Good to yeah, go. It's yeah. a nice grass-fed New Zealand butter. Mm-hmm. Tastes really good. We're gonna have some beef in a short while. And yeah, would you say there is there is anything else that would be important for you to share with people that you haven't shared already with this whole journey? Mm, you just gotta pay attention to yourself. Don't worry too much about this person's doing this or like, you know, this person's carnivore so that means i gotta stop eating vegetables even though i enjoy vegetables and vegetables are good for me don't don't worry just do what's good for you yeah. you know um i get many people message me like this and they're like oh you know i ate vegetables is that bad or something like it, it's up to you you know just do what works for you and you have to experiment to find what works for you yeah because you only know at the end of the day the person themselves it sounds like that's what you did you heard some things about the raw carnivore right. and then you tried it out it worked right. for you but it might not work for someone else but yeah i think that's a really good message is too many people end up looking outside of themselves mm-hmm. and this is why like we held on to veganism for so long right. and it was like we held on it for longer than was absolutely necessary for us it affected us in such a negative way yeah because i think a lot of it we were kind of um worried about what other people thought like well all my friends are vegan and like i'm in this big vegan oh, community yeah. it's like i can't just like break out of this now so you're kind of you're kind of worried about what other people think but inside you really knew like uh, i think this is not working you know yeah but yeah, and a lot yeah. of time people can end up judging themselves around eating animal foods and feeling bad about it. But it seemed that you managed to, I guess over time, you managed to get rid of a lot of your vegan brainwashing and yeah. dogma, dogma that being yeah. printed within you. Yeah, but it took a lot of time. And yeah. It took, took a lot of time. and, and um, if, you could, if you could elaborate on that, that would be cool. Well, actually, um, I had, in the last six months of my veganism, I had one time that was similar to the story I told where I ate the steak and I felt like, wow, that was what I needed. I had another time like that where I ate a uh, beef heart and it was like, wow, like and that time actually was even more intense. It was like, I, f- I felt like uh, this presence in my body that I hadn't felt. And it was like, <laughs> like just like this really intense. I, re- I remember specifically my, like my legs and my feet. I could just feel more. You yeah, know, I've experienced it as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I can relate. Yeah. And, and um, I'm like, wow, that was powerful. But then I, I went back. I went back because I thought, no, you know, this whole vegan thing, it's totally, it's right, man. Like all uh... these vegan people, they're, they're doing it right. You know, it's, it's bad to kill animals. It's impure. So I thought it was like some... Uh, some trick the devil was playing on me or something that, you know, I was being, um, yeah, tricked. So it, it did take me a long time of, of, oh, I, I'm vegan, but actually I felt better when I was eating meat, but that's bad, you know, because this person says so. And so I, I can't, I, I can't listen to myself, you know, I have to go back to being vegan. So you should, with nutrition, something like nutrition, you need to listen to your body. Yeah, and listen to the telltale signs of when it's not working for you and when something is working for you. Exactly. 
And yeah, I think it's really good for people to hear Daniel's story because it's like there's a lot of people that are young like himself to get on this diet and they just get into it and it becomes a whole cult and you get a part of this whole dogma and it can just be very dangerous and detrimental and he doesn't want you to go down that path preferably and I don't want you to yeah. either. It's like we, but we both took it to the extreme so now hopefully other people don't have to. <laughs> that's, that's what I tell people. Like I've, I've done such crazy stuff that now I can just tell you like that doesn't work. Yeah. Like that's a dead end. Don't, yeah. don't do yeah, that. Just don't go down. That <laughs> trust that me. Route. Trust me. And yeah, Daniel is, yeah, if you want to get hold of Daniel, I'll put his social media links down below. And he's actually started a fat loss coaching yes. service and business recently, which I think is amazing because he's actually helped his dad lose a lot of weight, Yeah, which is really, really amazing yeah. to see by eating a mostly carnivore diet mm-hmm. and a lot of time intermittent fasting as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so yeah, we definitely put a link down below for his contacts. So if you want some fat loss coaching from him, you can definitely get that as well. And yeah, it's just been amazing for me to witness the the changes with you because it's like, at one point Daniel was like living at mine for a while and like I got really to connect with Daniel. He found out about it through YouTube, he known about me for a while. So I got to see Daniel in the peak, you could say, of his like vegan journey mm. and then seeing the whole switch and the change and everything. And you were the first and like, yeah, the first person that I knew that had gone carnival. Mm. Saw the change in you, it was so significant. And for me, for my whole vegan journey, for like from that time until I quit about six months ago, I was never shut off to the whole carnival thing. And I saw it worked for you mm. and I was very open-minded to it. And I did keep looking into it because mm. I wasn't thriving so well. So Daniel mm. was one of those people that I saw that it worked for him. So when it started going downhill for me, mm. which then led me on to going on the carnival diet as well and regaining my health. So Daniel was a real like inspiration, you could say for me. And like someone that like I could look up to with the carnival diet and see that it helped him regain his health. And when as soon as I got the carnival diet, I told you, I was like, yeah. oh my God, man, this works so well. Like, <laughs> yeah. I feel so amazing. Yeah, it's just so like, yeah. And it is, it's just so, just so freeing to be able to regain your health mm-hmm. and feel like you have, con- you don't have to control yourself over your food and right. you feel satiated and you feel that it's really giving you what you need. And it just makes you feel like, like it sounds like for you, just more stable. Yeah. Just like more human, I feel more human. Yeah, and uh, and did, would you say you just don't feel like you're controlled by your food anymore? That you just like you can uh, have a lot yeah. more focus in other areas of life and exactly. you're more free. Yeah, it's in my diet now is so simple. It's like I just basically eat the same thing every day. And people ask me, don't you get tired of eating the same thing every day? Mm. Actually, no, nope. I, I don't <laughs> at all. I enjoy every meal, but it's also not um, overly entertaining which can be a problem for some people with food. They they kind of fall into this trap where they seek entertainment from food. Where, yeah, okay, food is entertaining, it's cool, it's tasty and all that stuff, but really it's it's, um, biological, it's it's, um, fuel, you know? So it's, it's cool to enjoy food, but when you're seeking entertainment strictly from diet or mostly from your diet it, it gets really nasty that's where you get like food addiction oh and yeah diabetes really because you start eating donuts and pizza and all these yeah. hyper palatable foods so it's it, that's another reason that carnivore diet so good is because it's so simple and it's enjoyable enough to maintain long term and it also keeps you very healthy yeah, and because you feel so amazing from it, it's easy right. to sustain. And because you're not getting hungry all the time, it's sustainable. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, yes, yeah. So many more people need to become aware of this, and we really want you to share this with people. Uh, make sure that you do share this with others. Maybe vegans are not thriving so well. Maybe someone you know, like your family members or friends, that are thinking about getting on the plant-based vegan diet because it's popular or due to some other reasons. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just educate yourself on this diet as much as possible. And one last thing that I think would be good to ask you is like if there's someone that's not thriving vegan or on any diet and they want to go carnivore what would you is there any sort of advice you'd give to someone that's thinking of switching that's maybe thinking that like they've got a lot of brainwashing program and they find it hard because they feel bad about killing animals and eating mm. animals like yeah yeah what type of advice would you give to someone um as far as is the morality situation of killing animals for me once i understood inside myself that like okay actually I need meat to feel good it totally changed the situation because really the only uh, logical vegan argument that holds up for the morality argument of veganism is that 
it's not necessary for the health of humans to eat meat. Where in fact, that's not true. <laughs> and so the argument doesn't hold up. Once you realize like you actually need meat to be healthy, then you start, your worldview completely changes and you think, okay, well maybe these animals were put here for us to take care of and then also consume, you know, kill and consume. So that's, that's like their role, you know. And, and actually when you accept that, you start to feel very grateful for the animals. It's like, yeah. wow, they, they, they're here for us, you know, and we're also here for them to take care of them. So. Yeah, we talked about this the other day, and it just sounds like a similar thing for you. I think you said this the other day. It's like, once I started eating animals, I started feeling more of a connection with them and actually mm-hmm. feeling more love and appreciation for them, mm-hmm. like more than I did on a vegan diet, yep. personally. Yeah, same. I had the same thing. Yep. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, you may find it hard at first, but like Daniel said, and from my own experience, you can overcome the programming and that. And mm-hmm. Yeah, like also, I said, it's, it's a very self-loving thing to give your body what you need. You may have taken another life, but for you to actually be alive and function to your best ability, if you have to take a life, then that then so be it. Yes. Like, yep. And it's also, um, you start to notice too, I started to notice that well, actually humans, you know, humans and animals are different. And that's like another thing in the vegan argument is like, don't be speciesist. <laughs> but it's like, okay... You're, so you're telling me that cows and humans are the same? Like, I, I'm speciesist, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Like, I, absolutely, I can recognize the difference, you know, the importance of a, of a human life versus a cow life. It's, it's obvious. Yeah. Know? Yeah, no, I so, completely agree with that as well. So, yeah. yeah. And, and anybody that's, that's currently vegan or even just you eat whatever and, and you find this interesting, then... Uh, my Instagram will be in the description. You can DM me on Instagram anytime, and I'll, I'll I'll do what I can to help you. Yeah, cool. So thank you very much, man. Yeah. So yeah, we hope you enjoyed the video, which we're sure you have enjoyed it if you've watched it to this point. And leave your comments and questions down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned because I have so many ex-vegans that I'm interviewing very soon. I have a whole list of different people. So yeah, you can hear their stories as well and that might be more relatable for you. So yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Go eat some meat, go get healthy and go function to the best of your ability. So yeah, catch you later. Peace.